I was screaming for it to stop. I was actually screaming stop. And they ignored me. Whole room full of people. Um, they just kept going. I was terrified. I, like, I'm not sure if it was the fact that I could barely hold myself up or the fact that I couldn't hold my newborn. For these two women, giving birth at the Launceston General Hospital was an unforgettable experience for all the wrong reasons. Days after the birth of her first child, Holly Bennett told hospital staff her baby wasn't feeding. He hadn't properly fed in almost three days. She says they dismissed her concerns. I ended up crying like nonstop because I, I thought that there was something wrong and then I thought it was all in my head because they were ignoring me. Holly says they offered her antidepressants. She refused them, but says staff gave her a high dose of antidepressants anyway while administering another medication. And when I woke up, I felt like I'd been spiked. Like I went to get up out of the bed and I had to hold on to everything to keep me upright. I had to hold on to the wall to walk to the bathroom. Multiple mothers have told the ABC they were medicated or underwent procedures without consent at the LGH. Oh, and it goes by so fast. Georgia Lilly still thinks every day about her experience giving birth to her daughter. <laughs> the bus in her first shower. That's my favourite photo. Look at how small she was. <laughs> She didn't want forceps or a ventuse, also known as a vacuum cup, used during the labour. But she says the doctor told her they were moving on to an instrumental birth without giving her a chance to refuse it. Georgia says LGH staff ignored her pleas to stop the interventions. Doctor was saying, oh, have we had a boy or a girl? Congratulations. And I, I can't even explain how dehumanising it felt. Georgia wanted to know if the medical interventions were needed to save her baby's life. Sometimes women can have cardiac conditions or other health reasons where the increase in pressure that can be generated during the pushing phase needs to be lessened. And this is when a vacuum or a forceps can be life-saving for the mother. Dr. Gino Pecoraro heads the National Association of Specialist Obstetricians and Gynaecologists. While he can't speak about specific allegations made against the LGH, he says it's important to discuss treatment with patients if they can communicate. You can't do something to someone without that consent. Uh, that's called assault and there are legal protections for all consumers of healthcare that they don't have to do what we recommend. But by the same token, if you choose not to accept advice, then you do have to carry some responsibility for your decisions. Dr Pecoraro says in life-threatening situations, there may not be time to gain consent for medical interventions. Researchers estimate about one in three women experience birth trauma, while about 10% of women suffer post-traumatic stress disorder after giving birth. The Australasian Birth Trauma Association estimates around 770 Tasmanian women experience birth trauma each year. The violence and disrespect that we see against women in society has actually infiltrated the birth suite. So those four walls of the institution aren't protecting women and absolutely women are receiving violent and disrespectful maternity services. In a statement, Tasmania's health department said it's committed to providing high quality and safe care to both women and babies. The department said it encourages anyone with concerns to come forward. It said all feedback is taken very seriously. Like I went from wanting two children at least to not wanting to ever go back there again. I suppose the biggest impact is that I, I will never willingly birth in a hospital again. April McLennan, ABC News.